After years in the movie industry, Coach Sins got to fulfill a lifelong dream and become the offensive coordinator at Texas State, who was one of the worst schools in the country. After an early preseason battle, I decided to start junior Tyler Vitt, who would be joined in the backfield by star freshman Calvin Hill, who was lacking a little bit in size, but trust me, Coach Sins knew the size did not matter. I felt like I was kind of being set up to fail, though, as our week one game was a 30-minute drive north to play against the Texas Longhorns. My decision to start junior Tyler Vitt was immediately put into question as there was a lot of dysfunction function on offense to start this game against the Longhorns. Everything we tried passing-wise was getting blown up, and even when we tried running the ball, Tyler Vitt was taking huge hits in the backfield before our running backs couldn't even gain a yard. It wasn't until this Calvin Hill speed option where he was able to get the ball off the pitch and then make a couple Longhorn defenders miss that we were finally able to get it moving, but once we got into the red zone, Tyler Vitt made a huge mistake and we fumbled it, and a Longhorn defender was able to scoop it. He thankfully was able to take it back, but that was bad. We got the ball back, actually winning by two because our defense got a safety, and right before half, Calvin Hill was able to break off this huge run and I was happy just some part of my offense was working because things were looking bad we were gonna get this easy three points right here until my kicker missed it and only holding a two-point lead against a team like the Longhorns seemed like a death sentence but we were bailed out time and time again by our defense as Quinn Ewers threw another pick we took it all the way down to the four and I said hey boys we gotta score or else we're done here Tyler Vitt answered the call with his quarterback keeper up the middle for a touchdown, and that was my first ever offensive points as an offensive coordinator, and I was so excited. But I can't lie, piss was running on my leg as I watched Quinn Ewers pimp slap my defenders. And a Longhorn read option on third and goal was able to finally get them into the end zone, which I really couldn't complain about. They were bound to score. We ran a switch concept on the right side, and this wheel route was wide open for a huge gain, and it was all about chewing clock and getting points. We ran a sweep to the left, and Jeter was able to get outside of the Longhorn defense all the way past midfield, close to the 35. And when a huge Huge opportunity came up on a fourth down for us to take a five-point lead. I again trusted my idiot kicker who said, Coach, I can definitely make this. And he shanked it like a moron. Only having a two-point lead against the Longhorns is scary, but when they called a draw on third and 17, I thought maybe their offensive coordinator was throwing the game, but it didn't matter to me. Fourth and 21, Quinn Ewers dropped back and totally missed everybody, which meant that we had the ball back and we ran out the time. We just beat the Texas Longhorns in my first ever game as an offensive coordinator. Tyler Vitt was player of the game with a pretty mediocre stat line, but vibes were high. Thankfully, we had a much weaker opponent the next week heading to Kalamazoo Michigan against the Western Michigan Broncos and after a kind of an abysmal week passing against the Longhorns I wanted to tote that rock and we did a good job of it. Calvin Hill was doing a really nice job of running in between the tackles, even with this extremely small frame. And getting some misdirection here, we were able to break some pretty long runs against the Bronco defense. And Tyler Vitt was able to score the first touchdown of the game on a speed option that he easily could have pitched, but he just took it himself, which was a safe play. 14 to 14 with just under three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Tyler Vitt was in the backfield and Calvin Hill was coming across in jet motion. We handed it off to him and he outran the entire Bronco defense before punching it in into the end zone to give us the lead, which eventually gave us the W in week number two. Our home opener was against Texas Tech, and I was really happy about how things were going in my first season as an offensive coordinator. We dropped back in the second quarter and found this corner route wide open on the smash concept to the right for the first score of the game. The Red Raiders were able to strike back, and they even took the lead late into the fourth quarter. Tyler Vitt was determined, though, to make sure that we were not going to take our first L of the season, and Calvin Hill brought us all the way down to the six-yard line. We ran a screen call, and I was wrong for this as they totally sniffed it out. Tyler Vit broke a sack on the following play. Looking deep down the field, nobody was open, so he decided to try to take it himself. He launched himself over a defender, but took a huge hit. And an instant replay, we could see just how bad it was. And he had to come out of the game, meaning that backup Brady McBride, who had lost the quarterback battle earlier this year, was now in the game. We ran a speed option to the left. Brady McBride made the correct read, and Calvin Hill did everything he could to score but he couldn't, which gave us the first loss of the season, and Tyler Vitt was going to be gone for the next four weeks with the strained Achilles. Losing your starting QB is always a terrible thing, but Brady McBride was here to show that he did almost win that quarterback battle to begin the year, and he was probably, arguably, a better passer from the pocket than Tyler Vitt was, and he was showing it on this two-minute drill against UTSA. We were down five, and there was just over a minute left. He found this dig route to Barbie, and then was able to find a zig on the right side over to Groves, who got out of bounds just past the 10. This drag over the middle was found and he came up just a little bit short of the end zone and the head coach decided to opt for a field goal instead of giving me one more play call, which I was really frustrated with. McBride had his opportunity regardless to show just what he could do as we were down one with over a minute left in the fourth. He dove over this laser in the middle of the field to Spates and then 
on the goal line. McBride ran a speed option, pitched out to Calvin Hill, and Calvin Hill was able to score. We thought we had the W, but the defense actually folded this game and let us go into overtime. McBride again answered from the pocket with this dot over the middle, and our defense was finally able to close this out on this fourth and eight, forcing incompletion. Brady McBride was now 1 0 and the player of the game in his first ever start. In his second week as a starter, McBride followed up his awesome opening week with a performance that went down in school history, delivering touchdown after touchdown against the Raging Cajuns, and we were just starting to pile it on. He was a bit of a seaman demon as he was able to hit the seams really easily, and he threw for five touchdowns in this blowout W, and Calvin Hill was even making his mark in the receiving game as a halfback. This was our first rain game of the season against a really bad University of Louisiana Monroe team, but McBride was really struggling here, and in the fourth quarter, it was a grudge match, 7-7, seven to seven, and he had only completed three passes at this point, so I knew I wanted to keep the ball on the ground a lot on this money drive right here, and looking to the right side, we ran a read option, McBride got into open space, getting, he wasn't very fast, but he was able to fight for extra yards, and he was tough to tackle on a 21-yard rush. We immediately followed it up by attacking the left side on a speed option, and Calvin Hill was able to get into open space and off to the races where he scored the go-ahead touchdown leading us to the victory in this tough game. The following week, Tyler Vitt was cleared to play and I made the tough decision to keep Brady McBride as QB1 for the Texas State Bobcats. We were sitting at the top of our Sunbelt Conference and honestly, I just didn't want to take the chance of messing with success. Playing against Georgia State, there was a chance that this was a team that could actually beat us. Mc Brady McBride late into the game, we had a 7-point lead and he stayed cool, calm, and collected during this dot over the middle of the field before Calvin Hill iced the game on this counter run following his blocks but then cutting it outside for a huge first down that pretty much put the game away for us. Brady McBride came away with this with another player of the game and I felt way more confident that I had made the right decision regarding our quarterback. I really wish this following game had just never happened. In another rain day, Brady McBride showed me that he could not play football when the ball was slippery. It was like if he had butter on his hands. It was just dripping like Vaseline lather himself up. He could do nothing right. Late into the fourth quarter, I did dial up one of my favorite plays that was meant for a close game to be able to take the lead, but instead we threw this hook and ladder play and got a huge gain out of it, but nothing came out of the drive and we got blown out by South Alabama on this interception icing the game. This was a bad loss for me and the team, and it started to make me question the quarterback decision I had just made. I told Brady McBride that this game against Appalachian State was going to be huge. If he messed up, he was done. And we were winning 21-0 in the first half, and McBride was able to run that score up even more. Yeah, he answered the call because, guess what? It wasn't a rainy day, so I guess he was fine. Delivering pinpoint pass after pinpoint pass, showing off a really good arm for a sophomore quarterback like he was. We followed that up with a huge W against Arkansas State, where we were winning 40-0. to Tyler Vitt did get some playing time this game, and it was cool to see because... He really never did anything wrong. It was just that Brady McBride was playing so well. Tyler Vitt did do well in his couple of snaps, and it made me feel good that at least we had a good quarterback too. We lost this following week, though, to Western Kentucky University at a score of 41-38 because our defense couldn't do literally anything, and this made us drop to number three in the conference. We were sitting with an 8-3 record and a 4-2 conference record, but we had to win this huge game against Troy to have any chance to make our conference championship. It was, of course, Brady McBride's worst nightmare as it was raining and we were down eight with a minute left. He was delivering some good balls, though. He had a good pair on him, delivering dot, and on fourth and ten, he found the semen demon himself, Groves, for a touchdown. We needed this two-point conversion. I had dialed up a triple option play, and Calvin Hill was going to be wide open, receiving this handoff, and then able to cut it up for an easy two-point conversion. OT time now, third and 22. We needed something. We hit Groves over the middle. He got the first down. We were moving, boys. Looking over the middle. Again, nothing was there. Brady McBride rolled out to the right side. He found the end zone for a touchdown to win the game and we did everything we needed to do but that wasn't enough and we still sat at third place in the conference meaning that we were not going to the conference championship but instead we were going to the Citrus Bowl which that was cool I guess. With Brady McBride obviously being a huge part of the offense all year I wanted to make sure in the Citrus Bowl that Calvin Hill made his presence known and that we were able to feed him the ball and he was doing a great job early breaking off a lot of huge runs getting to the outside he was surprisingly good at running in between the tackles and this also opened up our play action game opening off the scoring for us with this dot on the right side line. I noticed that they're really consistently stacking the box against us, so I called this toss to the left side, and Calvin Hill was off the races. His little legs were pitter-pattering down the left sideline before finally scoring, and really, this was starting to become a rout of the Chippewas. He kept on running hard and making defenders miss over and over again, but disaster kind of struck on this run play, where he took it, and he 
really didn't even get hit that hard, but his head was pounding and he got a concussion, so he had to sit out for the rest of the game. Brady McBride took it upon himself to finish this game out, delivering a nice dot on the comeback to the left side before taking this read option into the end zone to essentially ice the game against Central Michigan and winning us the Citrus Bowl. My first season at Texas State was now officially a success, and the happiest people about it were the frat bros because this meant they were definitely going to get late tonight after the big W. When I got back to my office, I had an offer from Texas State to renew for another year, but I also had a few other offers. What should I do? 